Oh, hello folks. How are you? Coming from the lovely city of Da Nang. Alright. So this is just like a quick update for mom and dad. Really. Friends and family. So that uh, everybody can see what's kind of going on and so on and so forth so what's happening right now is that it is is that a dog? <laughs> it's cold and the dog is lying in the street because it's trying to get heat nice this is a very pretty house checking this out it's very nice I like that anyway so so where are we at? Where are we at? Okay. Mom and Dad. Exactly. What's happening right now is it is the end of the Vietnamese year. So it is Vietnamese New Year. I.e. Tet. And I'm pronouncing that totally wrong, but I'm sorry. <laughs> Not. Um, What is happening is it's it is the end of the, the Vietnamese here, so it's now time for everybody to kind of like clean house and get ready for the new year, and uh, we all gotta go to visit my wife's family far away, and it is a bit of a nuisance to say to say the least. Um, I kind of like this year I don't feel in the mood I'm feeling like I had very high goals this year and I didn't achieve them so I'm feeling very disappointed I'm feeling very freaking uh, uh, blah, 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 distressed distraught and um, dismayed and depressed yeah seriously seriously depressed because you know I had I had some very nice goals and I didn't achieve any of them so now I have to go away and be with uh, my wife's family and it is difficult mentally it's difficult because I always got that feeling you know I'm a foreigner they're expecting a lot from me you know um, they they have ideas in their head about foreigners being rich and uh, intelligent <laughs> and uh, here I am just like uh, normal like not I wouldn't say dumb but I'm not that intelligent and I wouldn't say that I'm uh, crazy poor but not that rich anyway so not yet so there's the expectation of what I put on myself I guess so it's not really their fault it's all about me and what I think they think about me and number two is like physically it's just you know I'm the biggest person in the house now in South Africa with my family I'm very small I'm really tiny <laughs> so being in, in a house and, and everything is made for people smaller than you it is very annoying <laughs> And uh, my heart goes out to all the tall people in my family who's uh, been dealing with this for a long time. And then to that, as you can see, a lot of construction. And to that is also like I need to shave every day. And my, I've never ever seen my father in law or my brothers in law shave ever. Not ever did I see them shave so they don't 
do it so that they don't uh, they don't have um, it's it's not easy to shave right they just don't have the means to do it easy so that's something for me to always consider and it puts pressure on me so it's the end of the year and also we have to get a house because the place that we are renting is up for sale and uh, it is up for sale for people that live or, or, or what can I say that work in government kind of like official capacities like policemen firemen border patrol that type of stuff so I do not qualify and because I do not qualify um, yeah I cannot buy it and also it's pretty expensive that's I wouldn't really want to buy property like a, a flat or a apartment in Vietnam um, they are tend to take shortcuts on construction well they take shortcuts and they don't f necessarily follow the rules when it comes to um, let's say the road traffic for example they do not follow the rules when it comes to road traffic and, or traffic by rules and stuff like that they kind of like have this thing about um, the rules are not there to keep you safe the rules are there for policemen to make money so they really don't have an attitude of let's follow the rules let's be like a homogeneous society and consider everybody's safety so if I take that into account and just see how they culturally don't uh, follow the rules and take shortcuts on the road and I equate that to them building something then I feel it's very possible that they would take shortcuts and uh, in construction and you have a thousand people working on a big old tower like that uh, all taking like every day like a little shortcut here and there it's all going to equate to a badly constructed building so yeah I would not buy it there's I would buy some I would buy a house I would buy a plot of land and build on it a small little house they would be fine I would feel confident that they would last a long time so um, yeah just just my opinion I mean I cannot say for sure but I would be much more confident in, in, in uh, buying a small house than actually buying something that's like a big construction like a big old tower like that or something like that because the feeling is that they would take like shortcuts quite regularly to, to kind of like get it done and to the least the path of least resistance as I would think if I see their behavior so on the road on the road that's that's the, the comparison that I'm making um, very short term they, they very short-sighted when it comes to stuff like that so then also I would say that um, so that option is there the option is there and there's I would rent a, an apartment but I don't think I would ever buy one just just not assured of the quality in my in my opinion if, of course if they have the standards and, and, and inspections all logged and stuff then it will be better all right so now it is lovely well what is that oh Kawasaki anyway so uh, what else the uh, pressure about like moving oh yeah it's a long trip going to visit my family is kind of like a long trip uh, we're gonna do it on my wife's motorbike because she's got a new Honda Vision a very nice little motorbike I wish that I had money to buy 
a, a scooter, right? A scooter. My wife doesn't have a motorbike. She has a scooter, a Honda Vision scooter. Um, like you can see, everybody drives scooters. Now, I would like to have a scooter that's a 155cc. Uh, just for the fact that a 155 for me and her on a motorbike with a suitcase and stuff like that I, I do believe that would be much more um, Conducive to a, a good, good to a good drive number one and number two I would think that driving three hours straight 200 kilometers on a 110 cc motorbike with two people and some luggage would really be tough on that little engine so uh, I would like to have something that would be uh, the 155 would obviously not be uh, punished so severely in a drive as say the, the Honda Vision and it's, and it's a new motorbike so we would like to kind of like make it last I guess but um, yeah that's that's not always gonna happen so yeah uh, maybe maybe if anybody wants to sponsor me for Honda uh, for Yamaha MVX uh, it's a great great motorbike and uh, it's not that expensive at all and I really would appreciate <laughs> any donations <laughs> and uh, for your consideration anyway uh, so next well that's about that I guess the the whole looking for for a flat this time of the year well we could probably get a flat like really really quickly but it's like service apartments um, and that means they have furniture and furniture is something that I've got really plenty of so I am looking for an empty place to rent and that seems to be a little bit more problematic because we're looking for a place that's kind of like newish right that's um, got like certain standards and and obviously some some space a certain amount of space because we've got so much staff and um, yeah we're, we're trying to get the best price possible we can get service apartments that are fully furnished ready to rock no problem um, we can get that very very easy in our price range kind of but um, to get an empty place that's kind of like now something that needs to be it's um, needs to be sorted needs to be sorted so it's not uh, so yeah so that is where we at um I just want to say like I really miss my friends and my family um, I haven't seen them in a long time and I'm getting to the point I don't miss South Africa I don't miss the country as such I miss the people and there's certain things that yes that's just convenient but um, I am surrounded by beautiful people by beautiful things and I am extremely happy and exceptionally blessed while I'm still here um, I do feel an itch to move I've been in Da Nang for uh, uh, quite a while and I feel the itch to move and but we will see I'm actually thinking about starting a there's there's a business that I that I want to start um, and I do believe that Da Nang is kind of like just the correct place to start it because it's so central and I know so many people that can actually help me do it so yeah that said we we will see we will see about uh, the business 
of bringing bringing some pharmaceuticals in from Thailand not Thailand Taiwan sorry that, that's a bad joke if you confusing Thai, Thailand and Taiwan so anyway um, yeah that is that that is that um, but that has to wait uh, till after Tet and after Tet we will get uh, the ball rolling on something new and uh, see how that goes which is kind of like very exciting I'm very very happy that I will have this opportunity uh, just as a point of uh, interest these places here this is um, these little units here are actually well they're not that little they're pretty big there's like three floors um, four bedrooms three bathrooms lounge kitchen everything but they're going for about a hundred and thirty thousand dollars yeah interesting interesting it's like um, I don't think they I do believe they're still up for sale if anybody wants to buy one of those and uh, kind of like get it as an investment do like an Airbnb that could be something um, or, or like a homestay or something like that that could also work anyway boys and girls friends and family I hope to see you soon in the next video and uh, if you have any uh, questions comments or if you just want to like like the video and subscribe that would be fantastic anyway ciao ciao